Welcome to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast, an ongoing source of practical strategies and tips for anxiety and ADHD. We're a collaboration of former sufferers helping those currently struggling with anxiety, panic attacks, and ADHD so they can express their true competencies in life. Now, here is Matthew, your host. One very exciting book that I came across a number of years ago was called Feeling Good, The New Mood Therapy. It was written by Dr. David Burns, the well-known psychiatrist you probably have heard of. It was very exciting when I realized the ramifications for those suffering from anxiety, panic attacks, and depression. This book, in my opinion, opened up a whole new world of relief for panic attack sufferers. More precisely, this was exciting to me because it was my introduction to cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, allows you to examine your own thoughts for what are called cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortions exist when we're feeling anxious or depressed. Under the CBT model, this is what's creating our anxiety, depression, or or any feelings of emotional upset in, in situations are these cognitive distortions. Now, I'm not talking about normal situations where we would all feel anxious. I'm talking about the irrational fears that, um, you know, anxiety sufferers have in their everyday lives. So what the perspective of this book is, is that these distortions um, are at the root of our depression and anxiety. And once we can examine and find these thoughts, you know, we can really have a breakthrough. Looking back at my own thoughts when I was having panic attacks, I knew my thoughts were racing and often circular. And, uh, you know, the same thing that many people report. They they can't find a way to be free of their own thoughts. Well, this book literally shows you how to examine your own thoughts and in doing so feel a lot better. Once a distortion, really the distortions, because it's normally more than one distortion, forming the underpinnings of your anxiety. So once this distortion has been pinpointed, a new thought or series of thoughts can can then be substituted in, in the place of these distortions. So really what's powerful about this book is that Dr. Burns went on to include many actual examples that he had encountered in his own clinical practice, and he covered right through to the outcomes. So you would work through the uh, vignette of a current client who had these issues and right through to the outcome. Now, you know, that's all fine and well, and, and the real breakthrough comes for you, though, once you work through your own thoughts. So it's, it's all fine and well to read about someone else's thoughts and work through their thoughts, but you've really got to work on your own thoughts. It's once you turn this process on to yourself that it's very effective. Now, Dr. Burns in this book explains that how over the course of our lives, we panic attack sufferers have developed broader global beliefs, and as, as, any, as everyone has, but Our beliefs have led to our anxiety and panic attacks. And the book goes on to provide instructions on how you and I can discover these global beliefs. Finding these global beliefs can allow you to locate the underlying cause then of your depression and anxiety. Now, sufferers of panic attacks often struggle with the question of what causes their attacks. When panic attack sufferers review their own global beliefs, they can often find the root cause, so to speak. So really, I'm not saying that, you know, it's all about finding the root cause. But what I am saying is that there are factors involved. That's my interpretation of global beliefs. By working through this process, you will come to see how your own broader beliefs and perspectives influence your ways of feeling in life and your reaction to situations. And your situation would include your own physiological symptoms and your own anxiety and worry and circular thoughts. So once you can interpret all of those things differently, which you can learn through finding your global beliefs, then you can actually come up with much healthier beliefs that make you feel better. Whether they are an anxiety sufferer or a panic attack sufferer, or whether they're not an anxiety or panic attack sufferer, I think everyone can benefit from these things. We all have situations when we look back, you know, we develop a perspective on things and we say, oh yes, I didn't look at it this way. Well, cognitive behavioral therapy often allows you to see the limitations in your thinking when you encounter difficult situations in your life. For example, it could be just something that happens at work. And you go home and you process it later and you say, oh, I was just being silly. I was in the moment. Things that escalated. And, you know, I really didn't handle that well. It's not about beating up on yourself, but it's about reframing your perspective on things in a way that is more realistic and has a better outcome for you and really has a better outcome for all because it 
allows you to take on perspectives of other people as well and see their ways of thinking because that's all part of the process of recognizing distortions. You can find a ton of information about Dr. David Byrne's books if you join my free newsletter on panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia. Just simply go to the website www.panicattackrecovery.com. So it's www.panicattackrecovery.com and you can find out a ton more information about Dr. Burns and his books. For instance, he has a, a recent edition out. Well, it's been out for a couple of years now, and it's, it's, it's called When Panic Attacks. So it's specific about panic attacks, phobias, anxieties, and fears, and I suggest that you should check this book out. But really, you know, to be honest with you, having read both books, I would be tempted to still recommend Feeling Good, The New Mood Therapy, as the first book to read. You can no doubt get this from your library for free or pick it up at a used bookstore for next to nothing. And I would encourage you to read that book because I, I really think the introduction is very helpful. Dr. Burns later wrote a handbook um, I want to mention just very quickly, which was also the New Mood Therapy, but it was a handbook. And it included many more techniques for anxiety and panic attacks, as well as depression and, and other fears. But it expanded on the New Mood Therapy book. But again, I would still recommend the uh, book that I've been talking about primarily today, which is uh, Feeling Good, uh, The New Mood Therapy, uh, as your initial book. I think it really allows you to capture the perspective of cognitive behavioral therapy. And I think that the examples used at that time, at least for me, were, were very easy to relate to. And I, I think that was a very good entry point. So sometimes it, it, all, it, it all depends on you know, how you're introduced to something. And it's, its efficacy, I think, sometimes seems to stem from how you're introduced to something. So I think that it's a, it's a powerful book. It's a good introduction. I would highly recommend you even go to your library, go online, or even go to Amazon and read Feeling Good. And uh, certainly encourage you to look at his other books as well. But primarily, that would be my recommendation to look at that book. It's not specific to panic attacks. But again, it's not just all about panic attacks. It's about cognitive distortions and how they can influence a variety of situations in your lives which of course includes panic attacks, but includes other things that we all struggle with as human beings. Thank you for listening to the Panic Attack Recovery Podcast. Make sure that you have subscribed to our podcast and please comment and rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All show notes and links are accessible from our website. Please visit our site and subscribe to our free newsletter at panicattackrecovery.com. All information has been provided for educational purposes. Please consult a healthcare professional about any disorder or condition and the applicability of any information provided in this podcast.